told you they'd show up. Hey guys, I just want to bet. Thanks. I'm John Zadar, your host. This is June 14th. It is Tuesday and you're watching On Top and Hot. Now what I like to do here is bring to your attention OTC and penny stocks that are catching attention. Now today there was a lot of them that were in the spotlight. A lot of OTC and penny stocks were running today and it was fun and it was great to see, but it did make it difficult trying to figure out which ones to show you. So I did narrow it down. I got a few here that made some great runs today. The weird thing is, is that they were all running on news delayed. I mean, there was news maybe two days ago, four days ago, maybe even a week ago, but there is nothing current, but they were ripping it today. So the news probably has impact one way or another. But the one thing all of these stocks do have in common that we're gonna mostly appreciate, they all have low floats. And that's why I particularly chose these. So let's go see what jewels I found today. Nothing new under the sun. We are over here at the otcmarkets.com website. This is my go-to site and it really should be yours whenever you're doing due diligence on an OTC stock. What is the point of going over to Google over and over and over again, looking for stock information, sorting through decades of old information? You only want what's current. Well, this site and this site alone, I don't know of any others, is updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC with all of that pertinent stock information we're constantly, repeatedly looking for. Boy, the frustrations, headaches, and time wasted going to Google. Just come here, folks. Start here. If you can't find what you want, then go to Google as an alternative search base. But you're going to get it right the first time in most cases right here. So, how did we finish today on the OTC markets? A lot better than last week, but not as good as yesterday. We had $2.7 billion worth of volume. I think it was a little better yesterday, but a lot worse last week. We were at like $1.5 billion, and 2.1 is our average. Shares today, $7.8 billion. Definitely better than last week. We were having a hard time staying above $5 billion last week. And last year, at this time, we were at $55 billion. And yesterday, $8.8. .8. So we did fall a little bit today, but we're not anywhere near that five. And our trades fell to about 40000 from yesterday. But the market is very warm. There was a lot of activity today, and I appreciated it. All right, this first stock we are looking at, a stock that is no stranger to anybody. This is Revlon. You know Revlon, even if you're a guy, it's the cosmetic company. Been around forever, right? This isn't on the OTC though. This is a New York Stock Exchange stock, but it is a penny stock. Any stock under $5, regardless of what market it's sold on, is a penny stock. So this is definitely in play in our arena. She finished the day at $1.87 and had 60% gains at the end of the day. Now she did have news about three days ago and there hasn't been anything more recent. So I've got to presume that all of this is about that. However, it doesn't make good sense. It's a little ironic actually because the news is not good. Not by any means you can't find any light in it. But everything I'm going to show you right now looks outstanding. So you're going to be a bit confused. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Woohoo, man, sky rockets. We went from a half a million to 113 plus million. You're looking at 226 times her normal volume. Whoa, on bad news, unbelievable. Share structure, okay, now I told you we were gonna be only looking at low float stocks. Teased you here though, didn't I? Here's our outstanding shares. We have 54 million. You're unrestricted, as close as you're gonna to get to the float. They don't tell us what it is, but I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> it is just under 8 million. How about that? Under 8 million for Revlon, a big company. How big? Well, look at that income, folks. Now remember, we gotta add three zeros to the back of that. That is over $2 billion last year that they made. But of course you'd think, well, yeah, it's Revlon. They sell a lot. You might even think that they should have done more than that. But it only cost them about $849,000, no, million dollars. So they got to keep $1.2 billion, which is a pretty good profit margin. Cannot lie about that. How about disclosures? We got anything over here that I may not have noticed? Well, they did have an 8K. I love 8Ks. These are little treasure chests. You never know what's inside, but there's normally some jewels. Let's see what we get here. 
Now these aren't normally too long. That's the whole thing right there. And if you come below the rules and regulation areas, you can normally find what you're looking for. On June 2nd, 2022, Revlon held its 2022 annual stockholders meeting. They approved the election of the board of directors, ratified the audited committee. So they did some things, but there's really nothing there that looks like it should be moving the stock, especially since it was about, what, seven days ago? And news, I don't think they even have it over here in the news, do they? Dun, da, da, da. No, there is absolutely nothing here in the news. But I can show you this. You jump over here to Google, just put in Revlon. These are the three top results that come back. Should you sell Revlon Inc. stock Tuesday morning? Or should you accumulate Revlon stock Tuesday morning? Because Revlon stock has a beta value of $2.63. So what's the big story going on? Well, there was news that came out three days ago. Revlon stock plunges as WSJ reports company nearing bankruptcy filing. I couldn't find a lot of information, but enough. Revlon dropped 53%. I think they were at like $4.53 and they fell all the way down to about a buck eight this morning. And they say it was worth 263. So it was running today hard even with this news. That's right, there's a bankruptcy going on here. It says a mid WSJ report that the cosmetics company is preparing a chapter 11 bankruptcy filing as soon as next week. Whew. And people are investing hard in it now. Now this came out, what, three days ago, June 10th, four days ago, and today the stock is running. A little interesting. Let's go take a look at the fall and the rise of Revlon. Well, some things never change. We are over here at my free trading platform, Thinkorswim. Well, actually, it's my only trading platform. I got it free when I signed up for my free trading account with TD Ameritrade. You can too. Just keep your account open afterwards and you can use this just like I am. So we are looking at Revlon, ticker REV. This is a six month, four hour chart. Got a high bubble here of $17.65 about five months ago. And there's that low, $1.08, just yesterday, it looks like. She has been running downhill under the 200 all of this time. And she's had this huge drop upon the news of the Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Now, what's most interesting when I look at this chart is all that volume. Now, the news came out two days ago. We had a little bit of volume there and even less yesterday, but a ton of it today. But prior, none. Where's the volume? There's just nothing there. And today with no new news, nothing to contradict the Chapter 11 bankruptcy, it just decides to take off, not only in volume, but in price. Technicals, well, it's actually looking a little good. You've got a crossover right here, very deep down below the signal line, but it does look like it's trying to cross over, though the rest of the technicals are pretty neutral. 20 day, one hour view. Well, there's your drop, very abrupt, just off the ledge, rolled down the hill, hit the floor, had a dead cat bounce, and then today's rip. Came out from underneath all of the SMAs, including the 10, crossed the 20, busted through the 50, and then fell back down. And that's what's caused the SMAs, I mean the uh, technicals down here, to start cooling off. They are showing a pullback that we had in the back half of the day. So she did have a rip. Boy, she ripped this morning. She jumped from $1.51 up to a high of $3.13. And notice, right about here, yeah, right about there, that is $2.68. Remember I showed you in the news that says there's a beta value of $2.63. So they were telling you right there, well, the stock's worth $2.63. So everybody saw a deal. I could buy it at $1.36 and it's worth $2.63. So we expected the price to be pushed to that because someone already told you what it was worth. And there you go. They even went past that and that was the break point. Once they went past it, it pulled back hit it again, hit it a second time, and then it just fell away. Everybody took their gains. I don't know if common sense came in or what, because remember, they're going bankrupt. There's no reason for it to be surging right now. And that is the strangest part of this story. 
Most bankruptcies I see announced by big companies like Hertz or Revlon, as soon as they announce these, that day or the next day, the stock runs. From the price it's at, it starts running. And it's like, why is it running? They've got so much downhill to come. And that's exactly what does happen. You get a big surge and then it falls, falls. And I mean, it gets way down there, super duper low, especially once the filing comes out and the news press comes out and they say they have filed bankruptcy. It's a done deal. And you think, well, what's the point of investing in it? Well, the truth of the matter is these big companies like Revlon and Hertz, those are branded. You know how many decades of investment went into making those brand names? Nobody's going to let them die. First off, the company will try to reorganize and restructure on their own. And if they can't, I guarantee you someone will come in and buy up that brand name and they'll make use of it. So what's going to happen is it's just going to fall to a super duper low price where you're going to be able to buy up a ton of it and then be patient. Wait 18 months, 24 months for all of it to change over and get back into the game. And then you're going to be making some good money. That's the great things about bankruptcies. If you have patience, you can definitely find an opportunity here. All right, let's go take a look at that next stock. This next stock is pretty interesting. I just stumbled upon it because it had some huge runs going on this morning. And when I looked at it, I found a piece of information that came out two weeks ago. That was pretty big, but that's it. I mean, there's not another piece of information out there since two weeks ago. And it's running like this today. Unbelievable. This is ticker CMRA, Comera Life Science Holdings. She's on the NASDAQ. She's a penny stock. She finished the day at $2.65 with over 126% gains. Now, what's interesting, she's a shell company. That means she's not doing any business. Now, that's true in one sense, but not true in another. That piece of news I told you that came out two weeks ago was a filing. Let's just take a look at that right now. It was Form 15, came out May 31st, and that's the whole thing right there. It's real short, and that's all we need to read right here. Effective May 19th, 2022, Comera Life Science Holdings merged with OTR Acquisitions Corp. Plain and simple, it was a reverse merger. This private company went public. So what do they do? Well, as far as I can tell, they don't give us a lot of information here, but they've made a device a device that they call SCORE, spelled S-Q-O-R-E. And they tell us here that millions of patients with significant disease spend day after day at infusion centers with an IV in their arm. It's painful, time-consuming, and costly for everyone involved. So what they've come up with, as far as I can tell, is a device you use at home by yourself. So you don't have to have any caretakers come in. You don't have to go to the hospital. And it's easy enough to use by yourself. So they're obviously doing business. They just haven't got any financials yet because they just got there two weeks ago. So what was the relative volume around all of this? Holy cow, I can't calculate that in my mind. You've got 157,000 daily regularly. Today she did 68 million, almost 69 million shares. That is a huge jump. Now again, I've told you these are all low floats. I don't know exactly what the float is. They didn't tell us and I couldn't exactly find it, but I can tell you this much, it's under 10 million, which qualifies it as a low float. Whatever the float is, it's gonna be a small float. Financials are gonna be bare naked and you've already seen the news. It is a reverse merger. So let's go take a look at that chart because she was ripping it up today. This is CMRA, however, that is a one hour, 20 day chart. That's all there is to see. This came on the market May 20th. She hit a high that day of $11.44, has been falling ever since, just going sideways most of this time with little dips, hit a low of $1.11, still kept going sideways and then today two weeks after the filings without any new pieces of news information or prs she decided to take off and just like the last stock all this volume came in today without any catalyst and there's nothing going on before technicals were super strong the first half of the day and totally fell away the second half of the day Five minute, five day view. What a surge. My goodness. So she started here and it wasn't at the bell. She waited until 
what is that, 10 o'clock in the morning when most stocks are dipping, she decided to take off and she jumped from $1.20 up to $4.37. You're looking at over 300% gains in three hours, less than three hours. And then she threw it all away. If we actually draw a line here at the bottom of the surge, top of the surge, find the center, you can normally tell if the stock is strong or weak with this attitude line, if you will. It goes up and comes down and holds 50% of what it put on the table, bravo. Chances are it's gonna to continue to grow, but if it comes below that 50% mark, there's a very strong likelihood it's gonna to continue to fall down to the next SMA or even worse. Next SMA, 200 is down here at $1.93, but that's not necessarily the next SMA. We can go back to the 20 day, one hour and see right there. Remember, every time frame is happening at the same time. We just look at them separately. So it is sitting on the 10 day SMA on the one hour, 20 day chart. So even though it looks like it's probably gonna fall more here, it is actually going sideways sitting on that line. Now do I think this is gonna continue to grow? It just started. It just got into the ball game, didn't it? They've got a product, they've got business, but you need to do some more DD. I have no idea what they're worth. And because they were a private company, that information probably isn't going to be anywhere to be seen because it's, well, private. So once this company starts putting out information about their assets, their liabilities, their cash revenue, stuff like that, we're going to have a better idea what this company is worth. But yeah, I keep my eye on CMRA. Watch for them press releases. Obviously, you got a lot of people watching this. Look at all that volume that came in. And it all did fall away, by the way. It is gone. Technicals have leftover burning embers. That's about all I can say for this one right now. But I would keep my eye on it. Now we're taking a look at another company. This one's on the OTC market, by the way, that had a filing come out two weeks ago and nothing else since. But today she decides to give us almost 100% gains with nothing new on the table. This is CBLO, better known as C2 Blockchain Inc. Finished today just under 11 cents and almost 100% gains. She's on the pink tier and current. She's got that transfer agent verified, but she hasn't got a verified profile yet. You see this shell company? That means she's not in business. Well, she just got here. Literally two weeks ago is when this came on the market. That's right. This is a brand new listing for a company. Let me show you this disclosure right over here. There's the 8K, came out on May 27th. And it's not too big, that's the entire 8K. And they tell us here that on April 1st, 2022, the company, which is a combination related shell company, completed a holding company reorganization with American Estate Management Company. And as a result of the reorganization and FINRA's subsequent completion of their review, C2 Blockchain was given a ticker and boom, they are on the market. And that's all the news. There is nothing else to say. I'm not even exactly sure what this company does except to think they're in the blockchain, right? So what was the relative volume around the company today? <laughs> well, they have been on the market for just two weeks, and this is a 30-day average. So they do 662 shares average. Today, they did over 12,000. Not a huge jump, but it is relatively a nice jump. Share structure. Well, sticking to our low float theme, we have a float here of 21, let's call it 22 million, which is less than 10% of the outstanding shares. 253 million and only 22 are in the float. We have no financials because she's a shell company and I just showed you the most recent filing that we needed to look at. So let's go take a look at that chart. Charts are getting smaller and smaller. <laughs> this is CBLO. We are looking at a 20 day, one hour chart. This goes back to the 1st of June. She was here at 42 cents, hit a low of a nickel. That's what she was hitting right here. I'll draw a line right there. She was bouncing off this nickel a couple times. Now what I want you to see is that she bounced off this nickel and went up to here. That's 40 cents. That is 800% gains folks from here to here. 
So she hit this low again yesterday and she bounced up to, well, she was up to 13 cents and she fell back down here to about 10 cents. So she's doubled. From here to right there is 100% gains. She went from five to 10. But this is her average up in this area. Look at all these high bars. Even if it's right here, you're up at 35 cents. And down here, we're at 10 cents. That is a huge jump. Now, there's not a lot of history here to look at. I've got no technicals. I've got only one SMA, which looks pretty sad. What I've got is very little history of an average here. More bars are up here than down here. So this might be something you'd want to consider because that is a heck of a jump. And if it dips back down to that five again, I wouldn't pass it up personally, but that's just my opinion. You do your own DD and see what you think about this new blockchain company. All right, we got another one to take a look at. Let's go see it. Last stock we're taking a look at was real exciting today. There was a lot of buzz online about it. This is ticker COSM, Cosmos Holdings. She's on the NASDAQ. She is a penny stock. Oh boy, is she a penny stock. Finished today at 70 cents with only 50% gains. I say only because she was more than six times this earlier today. She was well over 300%. Now that 70 cent price there on a NASDAQ stock, that is a desperate, dangerous price. When you uplist to the NASDAQ, you have to be a minimum of $3. Once there, your price is allowed to fall below $3, but not below a dollar. That's the danger zone. And if you're down there too long, they give you a warning that you have to get out within a certain amount of time. And if you're not, they'll delist you. They will literally take you off the major markets and you end up back on the OTC. Now, this company did have news about 12 days ago. It was good news, nothing super big, but it was good news. But that is all that's out there right now, 12 days ago. And today she was ripping it. So what does this company do? Well, they are a pharmaceutical company. They distribute all sorts of drugs, generic pharmaceuticals, nutraceuticals, uh, over-the-counter medicines. They even sell different types of devices through a very extensive established uh, European distribution network. They are trying to expand into other countries as well. So they're pretty big. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, she only does about 229,000 shares a day. Today, she did 20 million plus. Huge jump, giant, without a catalyst. Low float, right? Right? Yes, sir. We've got under 10 million. 9.8 million are in the float with only 19 million outstanding. All of these are low floats. So when you start to get some movement on the chart, it should be lighter than these ones with a billion shares. What are the financials with this company? Yeah, they're making some money. Don't forget those three zeros. Put those behind here. That's $56 million she made at the end of last year. But oh my God, it cost them $47 million to do that. So they got to keep just a little over $8 million. Anything new on the quarterlies? Yeah, they got their March quarterly out. They did $13 million in that quarter and $16 million in December's quarter. So they are making money. There's no doubt about that. Their disclosures, anything recent or new over here? No, that's from 2020. And these are for a little while ago, and I did look at them. There's a lot of information in there, but it's not anything I see as a catalyst. The catalyst, if you want to call it that, comes from the news here. This came out, as I said, 12 days ago. Cosmos Holdings to launch Sky Premium Life Nutritional Supplements on Amazon in the United States. They're going to list their products on Amazon. Now, that can be great revenues. I'm not saying it isn't, but that is the news, and it's 12 days old. There's nothing else, and today it decides to skyrocket to the moon, literally. Let's go take a look at that chart. This is COSM, six-month, four-hour chart. Had a high back here of $6 and a low just the other day of $0.45. Cents. She's been under the 200 all this time, but just banging her head against it over and over again, including right now. So there's no guarantee that she can actually get up over it and stay there. Uh, the technicals, they were hot, very hot, and then they've cooled off because of the back of the day. And we've had quite a few days of falling here. Not quite sure why. We didn't see any news on that either. 20-day, one-hour view. 
So she was going sideways above the 200, minding her own business, not doing much, sitting on the 50, and then just gave up the ghost. One, two, three, four days of falling until she hit this 45 cent. Now that is a 52 week low bubble. But then so was this right here. And so was that right there. And none of these did anything different. So I don't really believe that that low bubble has a whole lot to do with anything. Five day, five minute. So there's your tumble coming down, 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 hit that low. And then today, I mean, there is no other catalyst. You got news about listing their products on Amazon 12 days ago, and you have a low bubble yesterday. But these are all low bubbles. So I can only presume what is going on here. But we had a huge jump. She started here at 48 cents and went to a dollar 55, over 300%. Look at that rip, folks. She was climbing fast. And this is why I like to get out of stocks. When I see a jump like this, remember, I'm on the five minute right now. When I see it zooming like this, somewhere up here, I start to get nervous. I start saying, oh man, I don't know how much more this can go. So I'll start to put in a sell order somewhere around here. And as I'm putting in my sell order, it's still growing and I might get out right there. You know, something like that. Because if I wait to find that ceiling up here, it starts to fall, I put in my sell order, I end up selling down here because it's falling faster than it climbs. So I like to sell on the uprise though. That's a tough thing to do, no doubt about it. But you can see why I like to do it. She rose very high and then she came all the way back down to that 200. Yeah, she's a little bit above where she started, but not much, not like that. She ended with 50% gains when she had over 300% here. Now, I don't know that there's anything really special to be watching this one for. I don't see any reason to put it on your watch list, but these are the sort of things happening now. Stocks are running without any cause, so you've really got to watch the volume. Go over to the OTC markets, go to their current market page, and look at the trade column. Look for the stocks getting the most trades. Those are the ones doing this sort of activity. As I promised you, all of them had low floats. Now, maybe you don't consider the one with 20 million a low float. Fine, three out of four. But I think 20 million is a low float. But we also had some reverse mergers in there. We had some stocks that just got on the market. Very interesting lot of stocks to consider. But of course, they all need more DD. So go out there and do your research. Have some fun. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya. Thank you.